But there are other communists who don't show their real faces, who work more silently. Hello and welcome to today's episode of Is Your Favor Communist? where we will be investigating Drake, the famous rapper and singer. You might know him for his catchy songs, his lavish lifestyle and his beef with other artists. But have you ever asked yourself, is Drake a secret supporter of communism? Does he hide communist and Marxist messages in his music? What are his real intentions and motivations? In this video, we will investigate these questions using evidence from his lyrics, interviews, tweets and other sources. We will reveal the clues and hints that he has left behind, and we will analyze them through a critical and historical lens. You might be surprised by what we find out. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode that will make you question everything you thought you knew about Drake, and perhaps the world. The first thing we need to do is to understand what Drake means by energy. What is this energy that he has and that his enemies are trying to drain him of? At first glance, he seems to be talking about a personal problem he has with some people in his life who are negative or toxic. But if we look deeper into his lyrics, we can see that he is actually talking about something much more universal and profound. He is talking about the relationship between labor and capital. Sounds crazy, right? Hear me out. As a rapper and artist, Drake is part of the working class. He is a creator of value, of wealth, of energy. But who benefits from this value, this energy that he creates? Who gets to own and control it? Well, not him, not the working class, not the people, but the capitalist class, the bourgeoisie, the enemies, as Drake puts it. You see, Drake is not just a rapper. He's also a worker, a commodity. He sells his labor power, his energy, to the capitalist class who owns the means of production, the record labels, the streaming platforms, the media outlets, the sponsors. And what does he get in return? A fraction of the value that he produces. A wage, a salary, a contract, the rest of it, the surplus value, goes to the capitalist. So to answer our question, the energy is referring to the surplus value stolen from the working class by the enemies, the bourgeoisie. This is a truly radical message from Drake, eerily similar to the famous words of Karl Marx. Capital is dead labor, which vampire-like lives only by sucking living labor and lives the more, the more labor it sucks. Can we be certain this is what Drake meant? No. However, let us nevertheless take this opportunity to learn a valuable lesson. We got enemies, got a lot of enemies, but we also got energy, got a lot of energy. Could it be that this quote by Drake is not just a humble brag, but a clever commentary on the nature of capitalism and its effects on the human psyche? Drake is saying that he already has more than enough, but he is not satisfied. Just like Drake, a capitalist is driven by a relentless desire to accumulate more, to grow bigger, to dominate the market. But the capitalist is not only motivated by his personal ambition, but also by the external forces of capitalism, that compel him to compete and innovate constantly or else risk falling behind. Drake's remark echoes what Marx wrote in his work Wage, Labor and Capital about this phenomenon. We thus see how the method of production and the means of production are constantly enlarged, revolutionized, how division of labor necessarily draws after it greater division of labor, the employment of machinery, greater employment of machinery, work upon a large scale work upon a still greater scale. This is the law that continually throws capitalist production out of its old ruts and compels capital to strain ever more the productive forces of labor for the very reason that it has already strained them. The law that grants it no respite and constantly shouts in its ear, March! March! Let us lastly focus on the second part of Drake's comment. I want to make myself the best possible me that I can be. Drake here reveals the fact that in a capitalist society which fancies itself a meritocracy, where all wealth is fairly earned and deserved, being the best possible me and being as rich as possible are synonymous. Therefore, by acquiring more, by owning more, you become a better you. In conclusion, it seems Drake's quote illustrates how capitalism influences our psychology, our identity and our morality. 
It reveals the need for eternal growth under capitalism, as well as questions the idea that wealth is a reward for merit, and that being wealthy means being a better person. Marxism has inspired many movements and revolutions around the world, and given rise to many great thinkers. But who was the man behind this powerful idea? Who was Karl Marx? Karl Marx was a German philosopher, economist, historian, sociologist, and revolutionary. He wrote many influential works, one of his most important works being Capital. In this work, Marx reveals the secrets and the flaws of capitalism and shows how it creates a system of exploitation, inequality, and alienation. He also shows how capitalism can be overthrown by the workers and replaced by a socialist society based on equality and democracy. Here is what Engels had to say in the late 19th century about the importance of Marx's work, Capital. As long as there have been capitalists and workers on earth, no book has appeared which is of as much importance for the workers as the one before us. The relation between capital and labor, the hinge on which our entire present system of society turns, is here treated scientifically for the first time. Many might argue that this remains true to this day. Capital is still the foundation of socialist thought. Therefore, Drake might be saying that certain socialists don't like to do too much explaining because they believe everything important has already been said and any further analysis is not necessary. Or perhaps it is implying that many radical thinkers and activists are beginning to lose hope. They have been repeating the same thing for over a century with little result, therefore it is pointless to keep explaining. The story stayed the same. I, or we, the working class, never changed it. Capitalism has survived and adapted to various crises and challenges and has expanded its reach and influence globally. The story stayed the same at its core. There is, however, another more optimistic interpretation of these lyrics. Perhaps the reason Drake doesn't like to do too much explaining is because he believes that words are not enough and that what is needed is practice. Enough theorizing, enough talking. It's time for action. Ironically, this too has already been said by none other than Karl Marx. The philosophers have only interpreted the world in various ways. The point, however, is to change it. These wise words from Drake could be interpreted in various ways, but the most obvious interpretation that comes to mind is that he is referring to the rise and fall of the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union and other communist projects were attempts to create a better future for the working class and humanity as a whole. They challenged the capitalist system and its exploitation, inequality and alienation, and aimed to establish a socialist society based on common ownership, democratic planning and international solidarity. However, these projects also faced various difficulties, challenges and contradictions. They had to deal with internal problems such as bureaucracy, corruption, repression, stagnation and revisionism, as well as external threats such as imperialism, fascism, reactionism and isolation. They had to balance between ideals and realities, between goals and means, between theory and practice. In many cases, these projects failed to achieve their objectives or to sustain their achievements. They collapsed or disintegrated under the pressure of internal and external forces and left behind a legacy of mixed results. However, these projects also provided valuable lessons for the future. After all, as Drake says, life is like a confused teacher. First, she gives the test and then teaches the lesson. Hindsight is 50-50, in other words, and it is easy to criticize certain decisions made in the past by the Soviet Union and others. The goal of criticizing them, however, should not be to prove the situation is hopeless and therefore capitalism is the best we can do, but to learn for the future. We took the test and then we learned the lesson. These projects revealed strengths and weaknesses and showed us new possibilities. The test was hard, complex and sometimes painful, but it was also necessary, instructive and enlightening. Of course, these interpretations are not necessarily endorsed by Drake himself, who is, as far as we know officially, not a communist or a Marxist. He might have meant something completely different by these lyrics, or he might have not meant anything at all. Our conclusion? 
While being a rich artist does not exclude Drake from the working class, being a business owner with employees does, as it by very definition makes him a capitalist. Our conclusion is, therefore, no, obviously Drake is definitely not a communist, but thank you for watching the video. Hope you had fun and see you in the next episode.